What's up, y'all? This is your boy Isaiah Standback, and I, we are back here on Let Me Tell You Something. Normally, I'm with my guy, Big Nate Dog, but today I have my dog, my ex teammate, yeah. my slash brother, slash mentor, all those things, okay? Mr. Patrick Creighton. What's up, your family? What's good, dude? Doing all right? Everything good? Oh, everything good, man. What's See, good, your man? hands ain't ashy, so you good? Nah, you, I keep my lotion, man, though. I keep my lotion, man. You know, <laughs> rub a woman, you know, you gotta have you know, you soft, soft hands. Like you know, a lady. Exactly. Get your hands out, Jiggin' Land. Some of y'all don't know about that. That's that's <laughs> life. Anyways, um, it's good to see you, man. Man, it's, it's good, always a pleasure. Though. So, Patrick, Patrick and I, PC, was what I refer to. I never call him Patrick, but right. PC and I, PC was one of the first guys that I really met and really kind of latched on to when I first came into the league back in 07. Yep. When I was a young butt, all wet behind the ear, yeah. breast smelling like Similac, and uh, didn't know what the heck I was doing. Uh, true, I, true, I, true. I didn't, it, it, was, it was a transition for you. It was a heck of a transition. Um, and I, I remember one of the one of the first stories, I mean, one of the stories that stays fresh in my mind is my first day of practice because I came in injured. You remember uh -huh. I came in yeah. injured yeah. off the foot and got drafted as a receiver. Yeah. Didn't know what the heck I was doing at receiver. And the first day of practice, you remember you remember what y'all what y'all did to me first day when I showed up? What did we do to you the first day? You didn't, didn't do nothing to me, but y'all was clowning the mess out of me. I think we did because you had the uh, you had every pad on that you, <laughs> yes, that, that you could find in the locker. And I was like, "Why well, her look like a robot, man?" <laughs> so I don't know if y'all remember back in the day in the high schools, especially uh -huh. they used to have the little diagram of all the pads. Yeah, everything you're supposed to, yeah. <laughs> you're supposed he had to it all on. <laughs> so that was that's what I that was my first memory. Cause these boys clown me. I'm stepping out there trying to compete, trying to figure <laughs> out what the heck to do. And I'm all my teammates laughing at me because I got on thigh pads, yeah, knee and pads. Everything. He was like, "Yeah, he's gonna be tired." <laughs> I think I had a butt he pad on be tired, too. <laughs> but man, no, but no, but PC latched on with him, man, and um, he was he welcomed me with open arms. Absolutely, because I had a lot of questions. I didn't. I I was lost. I know it. Yeah, I was lost. But you, uh, you know, rest in peace, TG. Um, um, you know, big T.O., you know, right, yeah. all them guys, all you guys, man, y'all really, really brought me in. I appreciated that, man. So that, Absolutely, was, that was dope. Man. Absolutely. That was dope. But, man, this ain't about me. This is about you, man. I want people to, to understand who PC is. And, okay. man, take, take, okay. us, take us all the way back. Take us all the way back to, oh, to, to childhood, man. Where would you grow up at? Give us a little background of, of how, how life was as a young, young PC. Grew up here in Dallas. D-Town. Uh, grew up here in Dallas, uh, DeSoto. Yep. Is, is where home is. South side. South side. So, uh, was it as nice as it is now, or was it a little bit more hood back then? It's, it's actually more hood now. Really? Yeah. It was. That's when it was. <laughs> so it was bougie. It yeah. went backwards. Not necessarily bougie. So when I got out there, it was slowly making a transition of of, of kind of being half and half. Okay. You know, now it's 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 pretty much African American, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But but it's, it's still home. Yeah. For sure. You know, it's still home. Still uh. Great school, great people. Yep. Great community. For sure. Uh, so I still enjoy going back. I didn't get a chance to go back this past season because my son is in high school now. So every Friday night, yep. I'm at a Hebrew game. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's been fun, though, man. It's been fun. So how, how was the household? You had both parents in the house, nope. mom, pops. What was it? What that look like? Mom and uh, two younger brothers. Okay. Yeah. So right. I'm the oldest of three. Oldest of three. What's the age difference? Uh, oh, this is going to trip you out. Uh, me and my middle brother Bradley, we are seven years apart, and then the baby brother, we are twenty years apart. I'm sorry, what was that? Yeah, he's an uh oh baby. <laughs> he's an uh oh baby. You can get, help people understand what the uh oh baby is. The, the uh oh baby is uh, uh he was not planned. <laughs> It was, it was, it was a, what'd you say that? What'd, what'd you say that, Chuck? You're you pregnant. Uh-oh. Uh, yep. That, it was one of those. So you got seven years and then 20 years. years. And so when I was in college, people thought my baby brother was mine. Oh, no. And I used to tell them, no, 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 no. brother. They were like, <laughs> your brother? Yeah, nah, he the, oh, baby, you know, it, it just, you know, it's what it is. So we just, okay, so that's how they came to be. For me, my brother is the oldest, mm -hmm. right? So he's yep. 10 years older than me. My sister came right after him. She's nine years older than me. Right. And that's our gap. So we got okay. 10 okay. years, nine 10 years. Nine, yeah. Y'all had, that's a. I had 20. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, bro, dad. Yeah. So how was that? How did that affect you, like, growing up wise? Like, what, what was that? What did the household look Actually, like? Actually, it was, it, it was cool. Because you got to realize, I was in college when he was born. Yeah. And so I really wasn't just at the house, house like that. all the yeah. time. You know, when I come home for summer. Yep. Yeah. But other than that, you know, but he's. Growing up and seeing me through my whole career, you know, he was like four when I came in. Gotcha. 
Gotcha. So it's, yeah, it's yeah, a big yeah. difference. So yeah. you, you can definitely see why people would think he was mine too. Absolutely. Yeah. And now now he look like your dad. Yeah. yeah. Your, yeah. <laughs> I call him Shig Knight. Yeah, he's, <laughs> so. he's, he's, it's funny, man. He's 23 now. Uh, and then my other brother is 36. Okay, that's brother I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bradley. Yeah. Bradley. Bradley look like Shig Knight. That, that's him. Yep. That is him. So what, what, what was mom's like, man, growing, growing up? Was she, was she hard on you? Was Absolutely. You, uh, okay. She had to be. Yeah. She had to be. You know, single mom, uh, Growing up where we grew up, uh, you definitely got to be tough on the kids. Yeah, yeah. Then, then they kind of are now. There was no, you know yeah. what I'm saying, what y'all want for them? Yeah, and that's what we had. That's what we had. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly right. Whatever she put on the table, we ate. See, I, I, see how, how, I know you're you married now. Yeah, you've been married for a minute. How does your wife handle that? Because my wife asked my kids, what do you, know, you want to eat? Do you, you want to eat something different? Do you want to eat different? I'm like, we don't do stuff differently, though. Yeah. Yeah, we don't do stuff differently. It's like, it's like if we're out coming from a sporting event. Okay. One of the kids' game or something like that. She'll ask. My wife will actually thinks she's going to make multiple stops with me in the vehicle oh, no. to get food. I said, oh, no, no, oh, no, no. We're making one stop. <laughs> They're going to figure everybody, it out. Everybody going to eat at this one spot. I'm not doing those multiple spots. That's not what we're doing. No. We're going to figure it out. So She yeah. gets it every once in a while, and sometimes she doesn't. What was the, what's your, what's your, your greatest memory of your childhood? Greatest memory of my childhood? Uh, you know what? I think just... Kind of growing up and spending a lot of time with both family and then my boys growing up. Okay. You know, uh, one of my best friends growing up, Larry, uh, it was like peas in the pot. Yeah. You know, from middle school up through high school, like if you saw him most of the time, you saw me. Yep. And vice versa. Yep. And most of the time, I was up at his house. Yeah. So his mom and dad were like my other mom so, and so dad. So you they were you get on their food. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so they All were right. like the extension. Okay. You know, uh, so that that was kind of how my mom was able to do, you know, and have a father figure, have a male influence for sure around me. That my coaches and things like that. So that kept me out of trouble because okay. we were always involved in something. So she put me in every sport for sure. So I wouldn't have time to yeah, go and yeah. get in any trouble. Yeah. Uh, so that was primarily the biggest, I think, influence. My mom, the way my mom was able to arrange things in life, so. I was scared of her. Yeah. I was scared to get in trouble. Okay, yeah. Because I didn't want that wrath. No. Yeah, I didn't want that wrath. The consequences. On me. Yeah. The consequences. Yeah. So how, how did, so I know you just touched on it a little bit. Help us understand like the, the um, I guess kind of, the kind of the structure in terms of not having the male figure in the house. Like what, what supplemented that? What took that, what took that, that, that place or who took that role? My coaches. Okay. And then my best friend's dad. Okay. That was, that was primarily. So I got to see how he, ran things in the house yeah. and stuff like that and how my best friend and his brother and sister were. So I was like, okay, yeah, let me let me listen to stuff he had. Cause he, he's an adult. Took care of the house, yeah. you know what I'm saying, worked. He uh, actually played a couple of years with Oakland. Oh, wow. Back in the day. Larry's that. Uh-huh. Huh. Back in the day in the 70s, I believe it was. Wow. And he blew his knee out and then you know how that was back that then. a lot back then. Yeah, there was no... It was no, we gonna fix this knee. You are gonna nah, be back next year. Wasn't no Don nah, Joyce back then. Wasn't <laughs> no Don Joyce. None of that. And okay. It was uh, it was funny because one of part of his signing bonus, they gave him a van. We just called the eighteen van. Oh, it was plush, dude. It was plush. It, what, what, what was, was the layout? Shag carpet. No, it wasn't. Roof. No. Ceiling. <laughs> side. Everything. <laughs> the Austin Power. Hey, shag carpet. Had a little bar in there, dude. No, it didn't. The water actually ran. Shagmobile. I don't know where he stored that water, but the water actually ran out the faucet. Uh, you probably don't want to know. Dude, I, you probably don't want to know. Right. You probably, <laughs> probably, probably don't want to know where that water came from. And I remember uh, when we were uh, growing up, we went down to Marlin, Texas, where he's originally from. Where the heck is that for, at? It is outside of Waco. Okay. A little bit outside of Waco. Uh, and we took the van. The shag van. <sighs> In the summertime with no AC, brother. <laughs> with all the shag with all in the all the shag around you. <laughs> Why we just sitting back there sweating so hard? This one and you didn't even want to move, man. We just sitting back there just... Everybody just sweat. We just sitting back there. Jay, just be still, dog. Just be still. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't singing no song, no nothing, dude. Nothing. That's terrible. Yep. That's terrible. But that was, it, was, it was a funny trip, man. It was a fun trip, but just hot. Yeah? yeah. Just hot box. Just hot box, yeah. So, what, so how many sports did you play growing up? Oh, man. Started off with soccer. You play soccer? Yeah, it was my first sport. What? It was my first sport. I think every parent should put their kid in soccer. I first. agree. I'm mad that I missed the boat when I yeah, was younger. It, 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 it teaches kids how to use their feet without looking down at them. Facts. So 
So it gets, you, it gets your, your your foot and eye coordination together. Agreed. Before you get them hands together. Agreed. Uh, so soccer, baseball, basketball, football. And then I did tennis. Uh, Hold on, bro. Time swimming. Time Absolutely. Why you couldn't right, tell me I right, wasn't Andre Agassi right, back right, in the day? Right, I was right, Andre Agassi and Jim Carrey. Right, 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 right. Yeah. You played tennis. Uh, was it? Was it? What kind of? What, what were the length of it? I know that now nowadays with these young bucks, these got the shorts are getting smaller and smaller. What, okay. What, okay. What, so, what inseam so, was the shorts? So, so this is what you got to realize now. Uh, back then, you know, it wasn't it wasn't necessarily the length of the shorts. <laughs> it was it was how they fit. Oh lord! And as long as they didn't snug you, you had some painted on, didn't you? Yeah, you, you know, paint. you know. But I was just, I was just kind of get out there, man, and, and go to work. So, so you weren't wearing your own shorts. You wore somebody else's shorts. No, I wore my own shorts. I wore my own shorts. So you wore your own painted on. They just, my shorts just didn't have pockets. Did they have pockets, or they weren't accessible because they're so? I didn't sh- have pockets. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't that small. It wasn't that small. Yeah, the four, I wish, the I, had, four I, wish I had a picture. I wish I had a picture. I, I hope you can find a picture. I wish I had a picture. I need to see a picture of you playing tennis. Yeah. Did you tuck your shirt in? So I didn't t- that's why I didn't tuck my shirt in. Okay. Because I had to be able to, I had my ball, my ball fit on my, <laughs> on my waistband. <laughs> and stick them on the waistband, man. Yeah, the ball in the back pocket. <laughs> 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 40. Mm-hmm. Like, Bro, I, I, I need, somebody has, look, listen hey. up. Uh, social media, y'all go find <laughs> some film of PC playing tennis, please. My aunt, some, my aunt might have some pictures. I need, I need. That's, need. that's what kind of introduced it to me. Okay, my aunt did. Got you. Yeah. So do you still watch tennis now? I do. Yep, I watch. That's crazy. Tennis open and everything, stuff like that. <clears throat> I tried tennis. It wasn't my it thing. Wasn't your thing. No, yeah. I got frustrated. Okay, yeah. I'll be, I'll be yeah. high. I get a nice little hit, yeah. and then somebody made me chase one, and they hit one the other way, and yeah. I just look at it mad. Yeah. I'm not going back over there. Yeah. So my, my wife plays it now. Okay. She, she's uh, on her tennis team at the club. I'm sorry, what uh, was that? Yeah. She's, they, have, they have a tennis team. At the club? Yeah. So so a bunch of, a bunch of, a bunch of the ladies mm. in the neighborhood. I'm, I'm going to talk to Gigi next time. You I'm need to. You should. I'm, I'm going to holler at her about cause, this. Because cause I'm really kind of uh, getting tired of them celebrating losses. <laughs> they, get, they get participation. We don't, we don't celebrate L's. Bro. Participation. We don't celebrate, yeah, we don't celebrate L's. But somehow they, they like to celebrate L's. Celebrate. Oh, they celebrate. Hey, hey, okay. I'm glad. Maybe how the match go. No, not today. I said, all right. So they just said, have to well, kick it. What y'all finna go do now? We about to get ready to go have a couple drinks and eat. Yeah, they just kicking it. Y'all celebrating loss? That's, yeah, they, that's what we doing yeah, in this? Yeah, yeah, they don't care. That's not what we doing. They, they, they just looking for a reason to get together. Some of so my boys give up. They yeah. give a little noise about it. Tennis. Wow. wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. Wow. That's yeah. yeah that's that's just interesting. Swimming. Yeah. She she tried to put me on on a swim team. Tried. That wasn't happening. Could you swim? I ain't swim, but not like that. Not like that. Not yeah, like that. that's different. Yeah. yeah, that's what they do. You, that's what they do. Exactly. Yeah, what, <laughs> <laughs> you can keep on you, swimming laps like that. No, you can get the shore. Yeah, yeah, you can get the shore. We had exactly our, our neighbor, our hood swimming pool is called Meg Rivers. And oh, really? Yeah, nobody really taught you how to swim. <laughs> there, there was a there was a, thrown in. There was a yeah. test yeah. Yep. to exactly see right. if you if you pass that test and you can go on the deep end. That's it. Right, but like that's correct. in order to actually do the test, like they just threw you in the water. Yeah, absolutely. And you good luck. Yeah, Figure luck. it out. Yeah. Figure it out. It's kind of how we do each other. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Back in the neighborhood. Yeah, that's the side, though. That's all right. Yeah. That's probably how Michael Phelps figured it out. And so, and so I made sure that uh, my kiddos were swimming at an early age. See, and I, I need to, and I regret that. I regret, I, I think I put my first kid in swimming. Yeah. And you my put other the twins t- in there? No. Why no, not? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, now my younger, she she's scared to touch the water. <laughs> she she don't want to sit on the outside with her ankles in there. <laughs> That's a whole body sitting out the side of the pool and burning yeah, up. Splashed. Yeah, splashing everybody. Yeah. No, but yeah, no, I, I wish, man. That's yeah. my that's one of my regrets as a parent. So yeah, I'm gonna have to figure that out. Get in there. Yeah, I think I don't like the heat. I think that's why. I think I cheated there because I don't I like really being outside. Likes the heat, but you I'm from Dallas? Saying. This your heat, hundred and whatever it is this for. A, this is two- this a different heat. This is this 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 heat here. Uh is God has developed a sense of humor. <laughs> the disrespect. Yeah, we didn't we we ain't had it growing up. Yeah. Cause, no. Cause at least when it was hot like that we was growing up, if you got some wind, it felt the wind, you, it feel, it, the it, wind it, felt okay. Okay. Now this is just hot air. This one here. Yeah, it's just hot breath. I don't I don't I don't know what this is. Nah, it's just hot breath. breathing dragon. Yeah. I don't, I don't like, like it. it. I don't like it at all. I don't all. like it at all. Man, well all right, so so playing all these different sports as a kid, so Obviously, we know that you went. You ended up getting to the league. But what was your dream and aspiration? What were your dreams and aspirations as a kid? You know, the crazy thing about it is, uh, 
when we were growing up, we got into high school. Uh, DeSoto finally got put on the map uh, with Byron Hanspart in that class. Okay. That was a class of 94. Okay. So they were the ones that really kind of got DeSoto to where DeSoto is, and we just kind of carried the torch. Okay. So we got there. Our biggest thing was shoot, want to go, go play D one basketball, D one yeah. football. Yeah, yeah. That was, our, that was our biggest thing. So it football, was, football it wasn't was even, your thing. It wasn't even past college. That wasn't. Even, we want. We want to get to college. College, yeah. To do that, we wouldn't even think about NFL, huh. and NBA, and like that. So that was our biggest thing. We got there because we saw them in that class. Uh, they had six go to just Texas Tech. They wasn't counting the other. I think seven or thirteen that went D one out of that class. Hmm. So they had six just go to Texas Tech. So college was the was the dream. That, that was, was the that aspiration. Was the that was the that's interesting. Thing. Yeah. See, I didn't, I don't know if because I was a baseball guy for the mm-hmm. most part. I played you know multiple sports yeah, too, but no. baseball was my thing. And at the time, baseball were grabbing cats out of high school. You know, right, yeah. so I yeah. think my dreams was always the league. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I didn't touch a football until I was thirteen. So football was really never on my mind. It was yeah. always baseball, and it was yeah. like high school, pro. Like okay. college for me was just like. If I had to do it, I had to do it. I'm going. Yeah, I'm going. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. All so right. That was, that was a big thing. So I didn't really even uh, start even thinking about the pro level until I was sophomore, junior in okay. college. And what position were you playing in high school and in, in college? Would you? So in school, tell, tell me about what college you went to. So, so in high school, I played quarterback and free safety. That's so a I was recruited as a safety coming out of high yeah, school. So you hit people. I intercepted passes. <laughs> That's the difference. I make tackles. <laughs> I ain't hit Now, coming up and just laying the wood. Yeah, no, no. I'm going to come up and make a sure tackle. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, Texas Tech uh, got me because all I could think about was when them all boys, I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Uh, didn't take care of my books like mm. I was supposed to. Mm. Went the Juco route. Okay. Uh, Hard route. Yeah, the, the road less traveled. Yeah. A lot of people don't, don't know about like yeah. Like, Juco has players that oh, they supposed got some to dudes. be at the damn D one school, but for whatever reason, yeah. didn't take care of their business or whatever, still but, go and be able to play. But what what was that like when you had to face those face that reality that, that you weren't gonna be able to go to the big schools that were recruiting you, that yeah. wanted you, yeah. but you had to go to JUCO route because of something that you failed to do. Tough. Yeah. Because I didn't realize the quality that was at the JUCOs till I got on campus. Got you. I realized I was You're like talking about the talent level. Yeah, and I was like, God dang. Yeah. Boy I can play now. Shit. Yeah. Oh, I better step it up, okay? Yeah. And so that made me have to bring my game up. And I don't think a lot of people realize an off-season workout at JUCO. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they working. come with it. Yeah. They come with it from them down holding them 45-pound plate with them wall sits. Yeah, buddy. Oh, let, that, let, that, let that weight go down. We no, gotta sir. On. No, sir. Everybody. You don't, you don't want no parts yeah. of that, man. Because the repercussions on that, dude. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> the consequences on that is it's rough, man. That's interesting, man. So you had to face the – and at what point – help us understand that. Give, give everybody a visual of when you had to face that reality that I'm when, not going to be able to go play big boy in college. When I, when I first realized it, it wasn't at JUCO. It was when I came back home from JUCO. Okay. Because I came back home and set out a year. Okay. That's when I had to face reality of, God dang it, that was probably the roughest year in my life. Yeah. Because now you went from having freedom at school yeah. to now I'm back on the mom's house. And mama wasn't making nothing easy at all. Ooh. Number one, yeah, get your job. Yep. Yeah, do something. You're going gonna to do something. You ain't going to sit around here. You're not going to sit around this house. Yeah. Whatever. And so realizing that and huh. sitting there, I was like, I can't keep working nine to five jobs. This ain't going to Now, did you have friends that, that went on to big schools? Uh, Yes. Uh, right off the bat. Had a few. Had, well, yeah, but some, some were younger. Okay. Some were younger. Uh, And so... So you had to watch some other cats yeah, when I'm, go straight I'm, but there. But when I'm watching some other guys I played like Little League with yeah, and everything yeah. and stuff, now they're, they're getting And I'm like, I'm supposed to be there. Yeah. I'm supposed to be there. So you remember Ricky Williams that went to, not Texas, mm. but the running back that went to Texas Tech. Yes. Yeah. He played at Indy. Okay. We played Little League together. Nice. So seeing him at Tech, and he's like, man, you're supposed to be here. Yeah. I know, brother. I know. So it was, it was hard sitting out that year. Yeah, I imagine. So when Northwestern Oklahoma State, Called my high school coach and gave me a chance to come back, get back in school. I didn't even take a visit. Just, just sign me up. Sign me up when I got to be there. Hmm. He said, he said, I remember going up to his office. He was like, I don't know much about the school. All I know is 
They got a good football program. It's a chance for you to get back in school. Yeah. Cool. Man, I talked to the coach. What position they want you at? It was come, bring me in at safety. Huh. Just bring me in at safety. Okay. And so <clears throat> a tackling I, safety. I, definitely. <laughs> yeah, tackling safety. <laughs> I, I, ain't, I ain't gotta bring no. I ain't no. I want to know with you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was more of an edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so a uh, ball hawk. Yep. Uh, and so I asked him, you know, hey, when when I got a report, when the file started and everything. Yep. Did that. Got enrolled. When I showed up, the culture shock got me for a second. In what regard? It's in the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma. <laughs> and the only students there are athletes. Mm. So we're riding downtown. Uh, once, you, once you come in town, literally, you, it's 35 all the way up. Okay. Till you get to Highway 11, you go west, yeah. runs right into the town. Ain't nothing else there. Ain't nothing else there. Bro. Yeah. Nothing else out there. You're pulling into the town and everything, and as we're going down the main boulevard, you know, people are waving. And I was like, hey. My mama looked at you like, you sure you want to stay here? It was like, it was like an episode of Nope. I'm, I'm here exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm staying. But they, they realized, you know, the athletes, it was time to report back for fall camps. It was like they were out there welcoming you yeah. to the town. And so that, that town is a big community and they are oriented around the school because it's a uh, college town. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so they know when it's that time. It's time to get back rocking and rolling and everything. Yeah. They're all coming in. We want to make them feel like they're at home. That's awesome. You got to realize, a lot of us uh, guys that I went to school with were from Texas, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, Florida. South, yeah. Yeah, out of South. Yeah. Uh, and then, I mean, of course, there's people from Oklahoma For as sure. well. For yeah. sure, uh, yeah. But that was a lot of them, and they all came from like a lot of JUCOs. So how, how was that? Now, you may not have experienced this, but I can only imagine. As I visualize this, right, mm -hmm. I visualize all these athletes, right? right. I would imagine primarily African-American athletes yeah. coming okay. into this old town, small town in Oklahoma Absolutely. with tumbleweeds flying across the ground. I'd imagine mm -hmm. you probably didn't look like the community. It was. It's funny that because once you first see it, you don't know. But when you become part of it, yeah, then it's like, Shit, that's that's second home. Yeah, yeah. So that became my second. That's home. dope. Yeah, and so I'm actually headed back up to catch a game in September. Okay. Uh, it's my son's bye week, so they don't have a game that weekend. So uh -huh. I'm gonna go up there. I got a couple buddies that are flying in. That's I'm awesome. Gonna drive up, go to another game because uh, our ex teammate, which was my fullback at the time, uh, he's the head coach. <laughs> So we'll have to go back go up back. there. Yeah, go back up there, man. Support him, support the school, That's see old dope, people man. and things like that. So That says a lot about it's that good. community because I would have never, I would have never, I would have lost my money on that one. <laughs> I would have lost my money so, on that bet. And my wife, she didn't understand it. When I first got out, you know, I would try to get back up there. Yeah. Uh, she was like, well, I don't know what it is you love about that song. It's, that... it's home, baby. Yeah. They welcomed me and they made me feel. That's dope. Yeah, make you feel special. What's the name of that town again? Alva, Oklahoma. Alva, Oklahoma. A L V A. All right, y'all remember that. Alva, you ever stop by Alva? Tell them that you know PC. Yeah, first off, you ain't going to stop by Alva. <laughs> you know. That's a destination. That's a destination. That's a destination. Yeah. 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 So if you don't stop in Alva, if somebody, they driving by. They ain't no driving by. They, they, <laughs> that's all there is. You, know, you don't drive by it. You got to be going to it. The only way you go through it is if you coming from West Oklahoma. Okay. Panhandle or something. You got to come through the town to get over to 35. Okay. But then you ain't, you ain't, it's not a stop by. So. Yeah, yeah. So, so you in Alva, Oklahoma, uh -huh. playing safety. Yep. Red shirt that year. Okay. And, you know, red shirt, you got to do show team. Absolutely. Uh, we had a DB who had just transferred from Kansas State. Okay. Got in a little bit of trouble, whatever stuff, yep. transferred to K-State. Small school. Hey, come to a small uh, school. 4 two guy. Ooh. Corner. Uh, hand time or digital? Uh, hand time. Four okay. two six. All right. He slipped, and that's what they clocked him. Wow. Yeah. But he's a track guy. He's a track guy. Uh, a guy named Isaac Harvin. For those uh, that don't know, 426 is absurd. And that's moving. Yeah, that's, that's absurd, moving. yeah. yeah. Uh, but <clears throat> having to do show team, scout team, on offense. And coach started seeing me making catches and catching everything. He was like, huh. Never played a down of safety ever in college. Show, show, mess, show, show, show the one shot to your hands, though, PC. Because PC well, ain't got, he, got, he don't I, have regular I, I, hands. I got a broke this one boy got pinky. Kevin Durant size hands. <laughs> okay, so that boy could throw his hand up there and bring anything down. And so, making those catches, spring comes around. He goes, uh, yeah, go, 
Why don't I take that red jersey off and get one of them white ones? Yeah. You ain't going back on that side of the box. I was like, God ah, dang. So for four years, I messed with, hey, go, hey, we up. Yeah. Get some clock. Okay. He turned right back on like, <laughs> like I ain't said nothing. Yeah, yeah. So for four years, dude, I hounded him about getting in there at least. At least give me a couple of plays. Yeah, yeah. Let me, let, me, let me give some clock. Yeah. <clears throat> so you went out there and tore that league up. I did. Tore that league up. Mm -hmm. All right. So far. Okay. All right. Uh, and help, help, help the people understand how did that transition go there from going to JUCO to mm -hmm. going to a small school that now all of a sudden you got a chance to play in the league, right? And, yeah. And you are in the, the, tell us, combine. What, 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 tell us what, how, so, what went down. So what actually happened and helped the first year I was there, we won the national championship. Nice. NAIA national championship. Nice. We go back my next year. We lost that one. We miss my junior year on a Hail Mary. Oh. Yeah. Got to be by Hail Mary in the game. Today. <laughs> and then we go back my senior year. Okay. To national championship. So I was able to be a part of three yeah. national championship teams. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and everything. And luckily after that, that first year we won it, we had three guys go to the league. Nice. So, that's so they already had eyes on it. So yeah. they already had eyes on it. Mm -hmm. like, well, I don't know what they got going on down there, but yeah, they got something. some athletes. Yeah. yeah, and so we just kept producing, kept producing okay. uh, every year. Uh, and so once my junior year came around, my coach was like, hey, you know, you got a shot at playing at the next level. I didn't even thought about it really then. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm just, <clears throat> you're just at the moment. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep keep going, make sure classes are taken care of. Because I told you my mom. You already learned that lesson. I exactly. I told my mom once I, once I left and went, I said, uh, number one, I ain't coming back home, mm. other than just to visit you. Yeah, and I'm getting my degree. Nice. And so I held out on that promise, make sure I got my degree. Yeah. Uh, and I almost came out. I almost thought about coming out after my junior year. I had, I had taken that many hours. Wow. So I could make sure I was color hey, listen, here, listen. eligible. Do y'all understand the fear that mothers place? Man. Especially hey. single mothers. When single, when you and the fear that they place oh, into yes. young men, like y'all have no idea yeah. if you guys haven't experienced that before. Yeah. When moms tell you something. Yeah, you learn yeah, your absolutely. lesson, and then those promises that you make back to moms, right? Yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. You make that promise, like that's 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 a blood that's blood bath right there. I you know remember, what I mean? Like, I remember I had blood bond multiple semesters where I took 20, 21, 22 hours. Wow. While still having to deal with that regimen of being a college athlete. Yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of people don't understand that you know you got those six a.m. Mm -hmm. weight rooms. You got that class at eight, cause I, I mean, you six to seven, yeah. seven fifteen, and you got to hustle up. You want to try to get your shower, eat real quick, and then be in that class mm -hmm. at eight o'clock. And our coach required, you know, we had to sit in the first two rows. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so what? No, what? No, walking in the back room and you <laughs> grab chill, yeah. Yeah. Um, nah, yeah, 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 nah. You better be attentive. And he was sending the GAs to check. Ooh, yeah. And so, so we, we had we had coach we had coach Willingham one time. Oh, my ooh, last two ooh, years, okay. you know, T Dub don't yeah. play. He's like militant, absolutely. And, and uh, you know, they would send other GAs to go in there, sit in, and do class yeah. checks. And you know, I don't know if he didn't think those guys were being truthful or what one time. <laughs> but Coach William, we we had to do the same thing: sit in the front two yeah. rows, be up there, pay attention. And one time, he showed up himself instead yeah. of sending the GA. He sat in the back, and one of our teammates come. Creeping into class all late, right? He gonna, he gonna get in the back and slide and see that slid in there, and then all, all he heard was <clears throat> he turned his son. <laughs> and Coach Willingham was right there. He said, "I see you later." I see you later. Yeah, Ooh. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's different, man. Now because that's when you know the coaches was gonna handle that discipline. It was invested. Now yep. it's like parents have gotten so soft yep. that the coaches can't even do it anymore. Can't do it. Yep. I found this out, you know, my, my kiddos are, I have a sophomore, yep. freshman, and eighth grader. Yep. And I remember uh, a couple years ago when my oldest was in middle school. And they had, they had something that, that, that happened at school and everything. I'm like, shit, I coach, I run the dog crap out of y'all. Yep. y'all tell you, he was like, they can't do that no more. Wow. What you mean they can't do that no more? My wife looked at him, she was like, yeah, they don't let them do that because, uh, you know, we it could be hurt or it could be hit. What? Oh, I said, nah, nah, never would have happened in my day. Hey, hit that pole. That's Little League. If the coach just pointed and said, hit the pole. Yep, you already know what it is. You're probably going to cry the whole way. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But you still keep moving. Because things are going to be around that no. pole in the back. You're going to keep on going. Yeah, so, so Nate and I hit on that a couple, you know, a couple weeks back talking about, 
soft and how the league is soft yeah. and how it goes back to societal changes and all it that. Is. So this is, it I mean, is. it's you talking about it right now. It's, it is, it is, dude. And so I make sure uh, mine aren't like that. Okay, fine. Your coach can't handle it. Daddy can handle that. Don't worry about that. Let's go ahead and get some running in. Yeah. I mean, we got to. Don't worry about all that, player. Yeah. Don't worry. We just finna run. Yeah, yeah. So you got to put it in yourself because they're not gonna get it from you. Because the coaches can't do it. Yeah. Look, you know, now we have a a. We have a new head coach at our, at our high school. Okay. Uh, which I love it. Yeah. I love it. Uh, because, number one, he comes in talking about getting the kids to college. Okay. Regardless of whatever it is. Absolutely. Yeah, that's his number one. Yeah. yeah. And he was like, he was like, he said, let me talk to some of y'all about wanting to go to your dream school, but you want to walk on. Mm. He was like, he said, I get that. And if that's what you want to choose to do, that's fine. He said, but notice I said walk on. Walk-ons are not on scholarship. Mm -hmm. He said, so we're going to make sure you handle those books so you can get some kind of money to help with that walk-on. He yeah. said, but <clears throat> when your boys and everything is telling you, hey, man, you ought to just walk on at this school, ask your boys if he got some of that scholarship money for that walk-on. Absolutely. He said, because these other schools, they get scholarships too. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just got to be D1. Yep. The D2s, the D3s, the NIA. He said, they get scholarships too. Yep. Just keep that in mind. Absolutely. I'm like, now nah, we're talking. Now we're talking. Perspective. Bring them, bring them back down. Perspective. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Everybody doesn't get to go to the big Correct. show. Yeah. yeah. And so when you come in, the first that's the first meeting you have with the parents. Yeah. You got me now. Yeah, it's good. And you got me. You got yeah. my attention now. Yeah. Uh, You're not selling wolf dreams. Not selling wolf tickets. Yep. Not selling wolf yep. tickets. And, and I've, I've, you know, looked and researched him. Well, he was uh, the D coordinator on Duncanville's two state runner up team. Oh, so he understands. Yeah, so he's bringing in a, yeah. a different whole mentality yeah. when it comes to the winning and everything. Yeah, we're going to gonna, we gonna tighten down on some things. That's good. All right. I was like, okay, good. He was he was shocked uh, this week, all the uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. And they're in the camp, they're in the football camp this okay. week. And he was like, yeah, man. He said, the school I came from, he's like, 40 kids showed up. Yeah, we had 250. <laughs> I said, nah, coach, they, 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 they send their kids up right now. You, you're going to get the support from the that's community. Awesome. That's awesome. They were like, man, hey, that's good. That's, that's good. good. Sweet. So, so the same thing that that coach is teaching in terms of the reality of some people's situations, Absolutely. you went through that. Yeah. Okay? So you went Absolutely. the JUCO route. You found yourself a small school. You worked your way up to that. Yeah. Um, actually, you had to go home for a minute, and then you went yeah, up to there. So yeah. um, how about now, how did that transition into the league? <clears throat> how, did that, how did that transition go? You went from so, college, small school, yep. all of a sudden, somehow, some way, you in the league. So – the, the the funny thing about that is when you come from a small school like that, nobody knows you. Mm -hmm. Sleeper. So I loved it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm gonna make you, I'm gonna make you realize who I am. Yeah. So so I got chip on the and I put my put, put chip on the show. Yeah. So I got now I put my head down and went to work. Nice. And that's just all it was to it. I made sure uh, I knew all my plays. Yeah. I made sure to put in extra work and stuff and everything. Mm -hmm. so how, 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 how did you get into the league though? Like, how, how did you get in? I got in because I had a hell of a senior season. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was quarterback, pump returner, okay. kick returner. Gotcha. So I still have, in, in, in NIA history, I'm still the only person to score a touchdown in a no. season, catching, uh, throwing, running, and then returns. Jeez. So... Jeez. It's still there. It's still there. Yeah. I'm hoping it still stands and, and, and lasts for a long time. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, absolutely. That, 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 that helped as far as now when you come into the league, you little man told boy, you know you got to do special teams. Mm -hmm. Cool. No problem. All right. I got to go do, the, I got to do the dirty work. Absolutely. Uh, and so Parcells made me shadow Terry Glenn. Mm. So Terry Glenn became my big brother. Yeah. You know, and it was like, if I, if I see 83, I better see 84 right behind him. And he, like, literally meant that, too, dude. I would imagine. He literally meant it. So, when you come from a small school, let me give you a story. You come from a small school, you don't really have the training facilities. <laughs> like, when you go into the training room and everything, it ain't no whirlpools and all that. It might be two wooden tables <laughs> you can sit on and get taped on. That's about it. The ice bath with a bucket with some cold. Stick your absolutely. feet in them and then absolutely. And paint yeah, Absolutely. So, I had never got... That kind of treatment. Into yeah. the fool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Getting the legs out. <laughs> so in the rookie year, Parcells was adamant about making everybody, getting them cold tubs, yeah. get them legs right. Stay right so you yeah. can be ripped. I'm going to wear you out. Exactly <laughs> right. So the first time, you know, I'm getting ready to get in there. I get in there, put the ankles in. I said, oh, no, nah, I ain't going to do TG said, man, you better get in that. Don't get your butt in there. Man, T, it's too cold. Dude. I can't do that. 
He said, you just got, hey, breathe, don't breathe, whatever, for about two minutes, you're going to be okay. Yeah. I got in there to about the knees down. <laughs> no, I can't I do it. I <laughs> so I finally get in here. I finally get in there. I got in there, and I'm, I'm just, I got my arms on the side. I'm like holding yeah. myself up. I said, I went to a full, full body. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a full body. Hey, everything <laughs> locked down, <laughs> and I couldn't hold on no more. I'm starting sliding down. I get me, get me. And, <laughs> and Big Flo's there just picked me up and threw me over the side. <laughs> I must cuss TG out left and right, dude. Cause he laughed the whole yeah. time. He ain't trying to help me or nothing. I said, TG, get me. Yeah, yeah. TG, get me. TG, get me. <laughs> Flo Jill picked me up and threw me over the side. I said, man, get these going down like Cam Newton went down the side. Going down. Going down like the Titanic, man. Oh, man. Said, that's Lord. awesome. But they're like having those big bros, though, to come yeah. into it was yeah. everything. Yeah. It was everything. Because TG was around when I got there. Yeah. And um, you know, Big Flo is it's still Big Flo. That, still, yeah. that big kid. Big old kid, man. That's that's absolutely awesome. So tell everybody about, about, about Parcells, man. How was, how was Ooh, he wait. and his. Um, in terms of being a leader of the Dallas Cowboys at the time, right? Because you came into Dallas Cowboys undrafted, yeah. drafted to be what? What's a what, seven round draft? Pick. Seven round draft. Pick. Seven so round you draft came pick. in. So you, so all you know is having to prove yourself. Absolutely, right? and, and that was the that was the big thing. And Parcells is that true old school coach. Mm-hmm. You know, he's he's going to test you mentally. Yeah, because he wants to see if you want it. How far can I break you? Yep, that's who. Yep. How far can I push you? How are you going to respond mm. to me pushing you that way? How bad do you want it? Mm-hmm. You gonna put the work in to do it? Yeah. Cool. When I ask you to do this, can I depend on you? That's his biggest thing. I need you to be dependable. Yeah. I don't need flash players. I don't yeah. need you doing this. Oh, he's got it. And all of a sudden, you're back to dropping balls. Dependable or and accessible. Yep. Yep. So uh, he loved that I was dependable. I was reliable. Yeah. I could go in there. Coming from the school I had, when I was first at school, we used to run the option. Mm. And so we was we was basically little Nebraska. Yep. Yep. So receivers got to block. Absolutely. So I can block. Okay. So he liked the physicality. Well, yeah, exactly. So uh, <laughs> the, the the non-hitting safety. TG loved it too because that meant TG didn't <laughs> he have to do it. That. <laughs> Man, and so being able to do that and being able to almost survive Parcells' yeah mental games that yeah. he played. Yeah. When he put you through certain tests, he wanted to see, but how you responded, it would let him know. So he had he had he had three he had three rules to it, uh, or three year three year rule. He's like rookie year. He's like oh, okay, show me something. I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt. Okay. Second year, mm, okay, you need to be coming around. I need to see the improvement from that first second year. Third year, okay, now, now I need to see what you can do. Mm. And that's how that's how he based everybody coming in, especially depending on levels. Yeah, yeah. I don't care if it was your first round pick versus your undrafted guy. Yeah. I need to see the improvement year by year. For sure. What are, what are you doing? Man, you still, you making, you yeah. still doing the same stuff you were doing yeah, as a rookie? Yeah, yeah. get about it. You ain't gonna be there. Yeah. You're not gonna be there. there. So that was the that was the progression. Yeah. Every year I always I always figured what part of my game I could keep improving on year by year. Got you. Uh and so my receiver coach, Todd Haley, okay. at the time. He was tough too, I heard. He was. He thought he was part sales. Yeah. Yeah. And he wasn't. Yeah, but he thought he was. He thought he was. <laughs> good dude, good dude. Yeah, yeah he, he he taught me some things too, uh, but a lot of it was passed down from Parcells to him. Yeah, so it's basically a repeat. Yeah, and so you'd be like, dude, I just heard, I heard him, I heard him, I heard him say, you don't have to keep on talking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it was good to have Keyshawn and Terry in there because they would tell Todd to shut the yeah, shut the hell up, yeah, shut the hell up, man, shut up, man, shut up, man. Yeah. So I was like, okay, good. You didn't they have like, no more about that. He was, they were saying what you was thinking. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly right. Uh. And so he made me watch. He thought I was similar to Anquan Bolden. Yeah. Uh, Anquan Bolden and Heinz Ward. Yeah. They did the dirty word. Yeah. Let's receive stuff like that. So I went back literally and watched every game from Anquan Bolden's first three years. Okay. And Heinz Ward's game. Nice. First three years. Okay. I was like, oh, okay. God damn, yeah, man. He do all the goddamn block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, why does X receiver on them yeah. got to do this block, <laughs> no, man? Goddamn. Uh-uh. So the motions and all that stuff there. So I was like, okay, cool. But you get to watch their savviness within the game. Mm-hmm. The nuance, the way they ran routes, and yeah. were able to get open and stuff like that. But also, 
not being big guys. I don't know if you've ever seen Hines yeah, and, and Quan. Yeah. They're not big yeah. guys. Yeah, big, 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 big they they play mentality. Big. Yeah, yeah. yeah, big mentality. They yeah. play bigger than what you think they are. Yeah. Uh, and so that's how I had to do. I yep. knew when it was time I had to come in and crack a D in. Yeah. Go ahead and block a, a linebacker and stuff like that. So it was one of those things where, hey, can't be lighting the pants. You better drop your butt down and get the blocking. Yeah. Uh, and so that's how I had to do, had to do yeah. that work. So, so Parcells kind of transitions out. You got a whole lot of change kind of happened. You yep. got <clears> T.O. <throat> comes in, yep. takes takes a position of Keyshawn. You got Wade Phillips comes in. You got young little dreadhead Isaiah comes in, <laughs> right? How, help, what was the difference between Keyshawn and T.O.? <clears throat> Ooh. And this is not even a shot at, at Keyshawn. Yeah, no, no, this is, yeah, we're shooting straight. Uh, Terry Lawrence is a specimen. Mm -hmm. You know that. There's a reason why he's in the Hall of Fame. Not just physical. Not just physical. But he's a specimen when it comes to the way he works, mm -hmm. the way he thinks, mm -hmm. and the way he reacts to certain things. Yeah. Like, he's not a social media guy. Mm -hmm. He's not a media in the newspaper type guy. He's going to give you a quote every once in a while. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But he's not going to sit there and be buddy-buddy and do all that talking with yep. you and everything. Uh, but when he comes in and you see that work ethic. Yep. Now it's like, damn, I got to step my game up, Absolutely. son. I got to go to the next level. Yeah. So that made my game have to come up. Mm. Listen, and like you said, he's a wealth of knowledge. Yep. Hell, he learned from the best. He learned yeah. from Jerry Wright. Absolutely. So I'm like, hey, shit, he learned from the best, goddamn. I'm going to be I'm listening to him as well. I'm, I'm all, all ears. ears. Yep. yep. <laughs> I'm all ears. Yeah. So that really, really helped my game as mm. far as how to learn how to take care of your body. Yeah. Learn how to train. Do the extra work. Yeah. That was the biggest thing. You know, remember, we used to... After every little period, remember we sprint to the end zone. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. finish the, the drive. Yep. Let's finish the drive. We yep. always want to get to the end zone every drive. That's yep. what we want to finish at. So that 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 taught me as far as who we're not just going to catch the ball and turn around. Yeah, and go back now. I'm not just doing my job. Let's sprint out 10, yeah. 15 yards. Yep. Like we like we catching this. That's kind of simulate a game. This is how you get your sneak conditioning in mm -hmm. within practice. Yeah. Uh, so that way we didn't have to do all that dang running. What's for ourselves? You running regardless. Yeah. What? Yeah. Bruh. Yeah. I remember after my rookie year after the the blue white scrimmage. Okay. My, you know, threes. We going last. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Soon as we finish. Yeah. You right back. Yeah. We on the we on get the sideline. Side run the gap. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Hey, everybody. We all two like, minute yeah, drills straight into. Dude, we all like, yeah. God dang. Yeah. He just blowing that whistle. Dude. I remember that stuff, dude. I was like, dude. Yep. I think we ran seven gases Jeez. after the scrimmage. One hundred sixes. No, I was like. When people don't know what gases are. 106 is when you line up on the side of the field. Oh the field, my God. The field is what? 53 and a half 53 yards. 53 and a half yards, bro. So you had to line up on the sideline. Yep. And, and every field has a crown to it. Absolutely. Every, people don't take that into glad, account. I was glad I snow I was flat. Okay. I, that, that helped. That I was mad bad. it was flat. But every most fields have a crown to it for drainage purposes. Yeah, for drainage purposes. So you would start pretty much downhill, run across the field. Yep. Touch the line. Don't miss the line. Don't miss the line. Don't miss the line. Touch the line and then run back up the hill down to the other side. That is 1-106. One, one, oh, yeah. And you had to do it in a certain time frame based Absolutely. upon your position group. Absolutely. So, was it 14 seconds for speed? That sounded about speed. right. Yep. That sounded about right. 17. 14 or 15. Yeah, around so he's, there. So, he's 53 and a half. needed to be about 7 and a half. Uh, second. Yep. Yeah, that's how you try to break Get it down. It. In your that's head. how you try to break it down. <laughs> Cause you, Cause they're calling out the times as you run across. Man. Five, six, seven. Yeah. So you know exactly where you're at. I need to be touching. I need to be hitting <laughs> that line. Let me get. Let me get the heck on. You're doing the calculations. So yeah, the condition was rough, man. Condition was rough. Mm -hmm. Let's do. So you had. So you came in. You had TG. You had Keyshawn transition. All right, Parcells. Now you got Wade Phillips, right? Complete, Wade, completely different. Completely different than than I, I didn't have Parcells, I but know. just hearing you talk about it and knowing no. what I know about him, Wade Phillips is is a walk in the park in comparison to him. Easily, yeah. I don't know if you remember the first the first week we got back from off season and we we're doing our uh, starting to get back in shooting condition. Yeah. And that Friday, the first Friday, remember when Wade came out and said, hey, y'all have a good weekend? Yeah, give us a weekend everybody off. everybody stopped in the truck and was like, well, we were gone. Huh? <laughs> huh? Yeah. Well, that ain't that big. Yeah. That's, some, what? That's how we knew right then it was going to be different. Absolutely. And I remember Wade telling us to slow down. We were like, because we only know one, 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 one speed, buddy. Hey, it's, slow down. Mm -hmm. We're going too fast. 
Mm. Okay. All right. We, we got to really, yeah, yeah, really yeah, analyze yeah. what we're hearing well, right now. Is it set up? Yeah, that was, that was, <laughs> see, it got to be a set up. got to be a set up. <laughs> and he was like, ain't nobody making the club. Ain't nobody making the team today. It's April. Oh. Because we, so we got to make the team every day. Mm. I don't watch them cut people in April, sir. Mm. So now I'm like, okay. Yeah. But now you get a new coaching regime. So now it's, now you're having to prove yourself to those oh, new yeah. coaches. Yeah. What they have, yeah, you know, and like you said, they, every every team is always looking for the next, the next thing. Yeah. You have it in house, but they always looking for the next absolutely. thing. Absolutely, absolutely. So, and that's how it goes. So it's it's always one of those where you can attest to this. Once you're past your rookie and you get the next wave of guys coming in, then you got to be securing your stuff. But you still got to compete with them. Mm -hmm. But you got to be securing yourself to know. Okay, I can still do this. Mm -hmm. I'm still gonna help him. Like yeah. when, I, when you came in, I was yeah. like, no, I'm like, I was, TG told me, he was like, leave the game better than the way you found it. Yeah. So that's why taking me on this wing, I'm like, no, I'm going to share this knowledge with you. Yeah, pass it off. Say, because it's going to be somebody else coming after you too, dude. Yeah. Share it. Pass all that knowledge. So I was always one that <clears throat> made sure when the younger guys came in, yeah. all right, let me make, let me help you make yeah. this transition, dude. This is what you yeah, need to do. And I was in your hip pocket. Yeah, this is what you need to yeah. do. Uh, and so I've never been a guy would be like, that. be like, nah, uh -uh. Yeah, uh -uh. yeah, yeah. Share it. Yeah. Why not? Who was it this year that said it wasn't their responsibility to teach a rookie? Oh, it was it was a quarterback. Yep. It was a quarterback. They had just drafted a uh it wasn't Tannehill, was it? Did Tannehill say it about Tua? No, 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 no. no. It wasn't not that. Tannehill. Yeah, Tannehill, but uh I can't remember. Tennessee. Yes, ten hill. Yeah, if yeah, ten hill. That's yeah. right. Ten That's right. Yeah, they drafted his replacement. Yeah, <laughs> and what he say? He says, "Not my responsibility, not my responsibility to teach him." Mm. I was like, mm. "You know, he coming for your job." Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. yeah, okay. Whew. All right. So, how many years? Oh, we're not even go there yet. We're gonna go just just the time in the league, right? With the, with the Cowboys. Cowboys. Now you got Tony Romo. Mm -hmm. You got Wit. Right, we got T.O. There's a whole lot of drama that I, that was going yeah, yeah, on. Yeah, you saw it. You saw it. I yeah. saw a lot of that. <laughs> right? And we ain't got to lay it on to the table. But how help people understand some of the tension that they were unaware of that was taking place within the within the team at that time? Man, it was it was it was crazy. Then remember we had Ed Werder mm -hmm. kept on trying to infiltrate mm -hmm. and spread rumors. He kept. We was like, hold on, that ain't even yeah. what happened. Nope. nope. And so you remember when Ed Werder used to come in the locker room. Everybody be like, oh, oh, interview over here. Yep. Come in. We, we, don't talk. we, we just not talking. Yep. We just not talking. Yep. We was like, no, nah, you're not going to keep trying to but that was, separate but that and divide. Was everybody. And the thing is, T.O. was always made to be the bad guy. Correct. Yep. Right? So yep. the perception, you already talked about T.O.'s not a guy who wants to be all in the media and Correct. all that. He just wants to do his job, have his boys, right? You know what I'm saying? So And, and his thing is, is he ain't never make nothing up. Yeah. That's the thing. So when he was talking about certain things going on without even letting it all out, we knew. Yeah, we were like, well, y'all. I, I, I remember uh, doing the interview. I was like, I was like, y'all act like he lying. He ain't, he didn't. He hasn't made anything up. Mm -hmm. I said, if if you think, it, go ask the guys that that he's talking about. Go and you go ask. Yeah, I said, and if they lie, then we gonna call them out on it. Absolutely, they never got asked. Yeah, exactly. They never got asked. Yeah, yeah. They like, no, nah, we can't. We can't make the Golden Boys look yeah. like they're colluding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and I know a lot of guys, man, and um. I have no favors. I I play with literally the greatest quarterback um, to walk this planet with yeah. in TB12. So mm -hmm. I have I don't I don't throw shade at nobody, but I do face the realities. I remember specifically in practice, and mm -hmm. To would hold everybody to that same standard that you were talking about, right? Mm -hmm. he would hold, you know, he would hold you know whether it's you know Marion and the Correct. running back group, right. whether it was the old line group, yeah. you know, with with Dre in them, yeah, or whether it was Romo. Yeah. He didn't give a dog on because he knew he was going to do. Absolutely. Well, he, he he knew that we had to follow suit and with we him. Had, we had to do that because yeah. that's how we got to win games. Fellas. Absolutely. Yeah. And I remember, I remember in practice, Romo would kind of just be playing around and not really deliver the ball the way he needs to, or not yeah. really care about a read. Sometimes he kind of just chuck it in the air. And I remember specifically one day. T.O. got pissed. Yeah, absolutely. T.O. got pissed and was like, hey, stop doing that mess yeah. because that's the same that's, mess that's that you do in the game. Exactly. That's going to get us beat. It's yep. going to get us beat. And it's the same mess that you do in the game. He went off, right? Yeah. Rightfully so. Absolutely. Rightfully so because he was holding his teammate accountable. Yeah. I remember those words kind of coming out, right? And in that next game, Romo made a play 
very similar to the one that he had made in practice yep. where he checked the ball up and he went off. Terrell went off again yep. on the sideline. And they and took that on clip. The Correct. They yep. took that clip, right, and made it all oh, T.O.'s being a the baby again. They, they always do that. And yeah. people didn't understand the Baxter. We knew what was going on. Absolutely. We knew he was holding Romo accountable. We knew that Romo wasn't doing what he needed to do as a leader Correct. at that time. Yeah. And he, was, he didn't want to be held to that standard, right, at least at Correct. that time. He at didn't. least at that time. And T.O. was made to be the bad guy. And yeah. that was kind of the beginning of the end yeah. yep. for him. And that's I just right. want people to understand that's not what it was, man. Yeah. That's not what it was. That dude But worked. at the end of the day, you got, you got to always have some kind of scapegoat somewhere. So he was made to be the scapegoat. Facts. Uh, and then anybody who was a friend or mm. whatever, we were guilty by association. Yeah, absolutely. So they slowly... Start breaking us shipping up. Shipping us out. And when you shipping say, us out. When you say shipping, shipping out, you you how'd you how'd you find out that you got traded? We were after the last preseason game. Okay. We're coming in from final team meeting before we go out there and run and then go home. Yeah. My agent was blowing my phone up. Uh now the backstory, let's let's go back to the backstory okay. for the the whole offseason. Mm. You know, they were like, no, he's not getting traded. He's a part of this team. He's a big part of what we want to do. But, you, but you're hearing everything. these murmurs. That's why yeah, this conversation came up. Yeah, so I was like, okay. Nope, he can't seek a trade. We're not trade. No, uh-uh. You can't talk to nobody, mm. no nothing. Mm. Who's telling you this? This is what uh, the Jones Jones family okay. are, are telling my agent. Okay. Them and the uh, player personnel guy. Okay. That's what they're telling my agent. Okay, cool. No, okay. We're we going we gonna to see how it go. Yeah. So going through OTA, OTAs and everything and stuff, I remember they drafted this. Mm. So I was like, okay, cool. No. Let's see how the, let's see how this play out. Mm-hmm. Let's see how this play out. Uh, Miles hadn't signed his contract yet, okay. so he was still in that last that uh, he was coming off the big year. Yeah, but he still hadn't got his yeah, he, he still hadn't got his, his contract yeah. yet. Yeah, so Miles is coming off the big year. They already done paid Roy with all them draft picks they gave him, gave up to get him and everything. So I'm like, okay, I'm doing the math. Okay, you just got this guy mm-hmm. in the first round. <laughs> okay, let's see what we going. What, what, what we doing now? Mm-hmm. What we doing? You, got, saying, you need your checks. Yeah, because if you're saying, yeah, okay, cool. That's what you're telling me. Not a problem. Keeps going on through the offseason and everything. They're still saying the same stuff. Then about a week or two into training camp, then it was, we're still trying to see what we're going to do. Okay. Hold on a second. You went from here a big party to now we're trying to see what we're going to do. Oh, okay. Well, let's see what's going on. Then it was, you could talk to some teams. Mm. Oh, really? Mm. But that don't mean we trade them. Mm. So they were trying to hold on to me as insurance. Last preseason game. So they tried to Baker Mayfield you. Yes, yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So last preseason game, uh, that's right, you know, you come in, that's when they make all the final cuts. Yep. You know, you saying by the guys that you done bonded with a little bit over the offseason and stuff. That's got the and trash bags with them. And everything. <clears throat> yeah, you see them loading up. And so they do that. We go have a team meeting. And Wade goes, you know, this hey, this 2011 Cowboys, this is what we're going with. You know, let's, it's time to get to work. Let's go. Let's have a good season. Get ready to go get our running in. Agent was blowing my phone up. He goes, what you doing? I said, man, we're about to get ready to go. He said, no, nah, sit tight. I think San Diego's making a play for you. I'm like, what you mean? He's like, yeah, I think they're going to trade for you. Mm-hmm. What? You're about to go and do conditioning. We're about to go, go get our last little running in before we go home for the weekend. So we're going to have a couple days off. And I was like, huh? He's like, yeah, so sit tight. I'm going to call you back in about five minutes. And I'm going to let you know. Two minutes. He called me back. He was like, yeah. He said, San Diego just pulled the trigger. I was like, so what does this mean? Like, mm-hmm. what, what, what are you telling me? He was like, well, they just traded for you. I said, well, how soon? He was like, they're probably going to be calling you within about an hour or so to set up flight stuff. I said, to go when? He was like, probably the first thing smoking tomorrow. So, so, so picture this. Mm. Picture this. Now I got to have this conversation wife, with my wife on the way. <clears throat> we just built our house. Mm. Uh, and so making that phone, and, it, and it's funny, we're in the locker room, so uh, Marion was there around me, Choice was around me, Sam, uh, get, ready to, get ready to go out. And when I got, I think they saw the look on my face, and I was like, huh? And I remember Marion just going off. He went, man, this is some straight BS, man. I'm throwing stuff. And I was like, 
wow, I'm still like in a shop. Yeah, yeah, it has to hit you. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, damn. So he, my agent calls me right back. He goes, man, he said, get 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 some of your stuff that you want for them to be able to ship tomorrow. Jeez. So you can have some stuff there and everything. This, I mean, this, these are like. Uh, it's quick. Yeah. It's quick. He said, I'll, I'll, I'll get in contact with your Nike rep so they can make sure they start sending the stuff that way and everything so you can have stuff. He said, other than that, you're going to have to make do with whatever they got there until all your stuff gets out there. Now, what time so, of the year is this? This is uh, September, September, right before the season. I got traded a week before the season started. Now you're going, you're having to learn a whole new team. But, new but, but even before that, Everything. even before that, yeah. help, help people understand how that affects your family. Absolutely. Your so family, this, this your is, choices this, that you make with your house, right? Your plans for living in the city. This dude, is your, you dude. playing for the Dallas Cowboys in the city that you, that you grew up in. Home. You build a brand new crib, right? Yep. Because you shutting it down here. This is where I'm at. It's home. It's home. And now all of a sudden, I got to make a transition to San Diego. Mm. And I don't know that. Now, like you said, just built a house. So my wife is still trying to get it furnished and make that transition. Because that's her home. That's her home. Yeah, exactly. This is what she uh, had her dreams and aspirations on, riding with you. I make this car. She was like, what you mean? I was like, well, I just got traded. Wow. I said, so we're going to be going to San Diego. She was like, when? Like, when, when we just, you know, we just built the house. We're just moving in. Dang. I was like, Teddy they're probably going to call me and probably be on the first thing smoking tomorrow. She was like, what? Well, I, I can hear it in her voice. Yeah, yeah. Did everything she could not to cry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I get to the house, and now you realize, like, I'm going to have to go out here. Mm-hmm. I'm watching them still here for a second. Yeah. She was trying to get the house organized, but I got to get there. Your support right system. Away. Yeah, you got to go take care yeah. of it. Yeah. So I was in a hotel for three weeks till we could find a spot. And then they finally came out there because... I don't have time to go run around with a realtor. Nope. Because now I got to get here and learn a new playbook. playbook. Yeah, you got, first of all, you got you to delete. I got to delete everything that's in your mind. Luckily, the system was very similar. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was just, so Jason Garrett learned everything from North Turner. Okay, so that's so why they, luckily, knew, they knew what they, they knew, yeah, when they made that trade, it would be an easier so transition. So it was just a little bit of different terminology. Okay, got you. But then I get out there and I learn why Garrett learned from North. Yeah. Teaching a little bit better than the student. Yeah. Yeah, in, in this case. Yeah. In this case, it was. Oh, so case so was. before we hit that, real quick, <laughs> I always ask a blunt question. Uh-huh. Romo or Phillip Rivers? What's what's the aspect we're looking at? If you had to choose which quarterback you're going you're gonna to play for. And we're talking about leadership qualities? Let's go to leadership. Phillip, hands down. Hands down. Yeah. What's it's the not difference? Even, it's not even close. What's the difference? Uh, leadership qualities. Accountability. Number mm. one. I don't care if Phillip threw a, a, a ball that you dropped. That's my foul ball. That's my foul ball. Mm. No, I feel that. Mm-mm. No. Yeah. <laughs> if I drop that, that's on me. Now, yeah. if you missed it, okay. But he was always kind of building. Okay. Phillip ran the meetings. I'm sorry, what? Phillip ran the meetings. What meetings you talking about? Offensive meeting. After practice, you know you're going to watch film? Yeah. Phillip ran that meeting. No one in there. Huh. And we didn't. That wasn't the case in Dallas. Sure that that was that. Not, <laughs> not at that all. That wasn't the case in Dallas. So all the, the the quarterbacks, receivers, backs, tight ends, we were all in one meeting room together after practice. Philip ran that meeting. You know what? Did the same thing in New York. Yeah. The, super, the year that we won a Super Bowl in New York, Eli yeah. did the same yeah. thing. But that makes him count. Now you're on the same page with your quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's so, telling you what he wants. He's what not he, telling you what somebody else wants. Correct. He's telling you what he wants. He what, he want. what he sees. This is what I'm expecting. What he sees yeah. in there. And that made us get on the same page. That's crazy. So the similarities, man. And I just saw the devil I was like, damn. Levels. I was like, Philip running the man? There's levels. There's levels to it. Yeah, yeah. levels to it. Levels to it. Yeah. Now you got everybody in there on the same page. Mm. And it's relaxed. Yeah. I'm not listening to a coach's monotone voice. I'm listening to my quarterback. Yeah. And we in there joking, laughing, and everything, but we're yeah. going through the practice. We laugh because you know he runs back, so he gonna you know they gonna always catch you doing something. Yeah, he gonna catch you. Something. He gonna highlight you with the red dot. That red dot. Something. <laughs> Somebody gonna get caught doing something crazy on the yeah. sidelines or behind the you know behind yeah. the player yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So he be like, oh yeah, watch it, watch it, watch it. And we get us a good laugh. Back to business. Back to business. Yeah. Probably be in there forty five minutes. Out. Going on to the house. Hmm. Going on to the house. Now but the, but, the, but the next time you touch the field. Yep. The like, communication, hey, the, yeah. the, the, non, the nonverbals, the non-verbal. the, all that. There's so many nonverbals that people don't yep. see. Yeah. So much eye contact, oh, right? Yeah. Head nods. Like, hey, hey, I'm expecting you to sit it, sit right up in here. So when you're so on that's the field, where it's going to be when yeah. they were in this case. You sit up right. Cool. So, so when you come up, I mean, when he comes up to the line of scrimmage, you guys see the coverage that you just talked about the day before. He's able to look at you. Yeah, you give yeah, him a yeah. head nod like, yeah. Yep, yep, we're on the same page. I know exactly. Yeah. 
And so, so it was crazy. A lot of people don't realize, like, a lot of that stuff with eye contact and signals is something that you're not even picking up. Mm. And it's just, a, it's just a quick little. Absolutely. Have you ever, have you ever seen him do that? And he's like, I'm not throwing a hot. Shorten your route up. Yep. Ball's coming out quick. Yeah, yeah. Forget that. We, we, ain't finna, we, ain't finna, we ain't finna try to throw this hot into this blitz. Uh-uh. But you're enough. only able to make those changes. I want, I want people to understand. Yeah. Everybody's in the league, yep. right? Everybody's in the league. You know, whatever quarterbacks you play for, whatever. Yeah. Right? Everybody's play is playing in the NFL, but within the NFL, there are substantial differences in levels to the 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 to just the leadership qualities, yeah. to the execution, yep. to the athlete the athletic Athletics side of it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, all those things are so many levels within the league. Everybody likes to paint this big picture like, oh, right in the league, right, everybody's good. Everybody's yeah, yeah, good. Everybody However, good. Yeah. <laughs> Can, is everybody good together, together as a unit? Facts and how? That's what that's what you win Ooh. with. One player ain't just gonna win no game. So Dallas had a lot of talent. Had a lot of talent. Dallas had a heck of a lot of, talent. A lot of talent. How much different was the experience in Dallas in comparison to your experience in San Diego? Okay, with my experience in Dallas, I still to this day I think San Diego's cursed. Mm. I never seen. That many more injuries, that many injuries, yeah, yeah. or people hanging around the training room like it was the club. Got you. You know, we in Dallas. We didn't like. Yeah, we ain't like being in there. Britt Brown. Hell, get you no, about exactly. it. Don't be by Britt. That's the number one right there. Mm-mm, I ain't going there. Yeah. Hey, hey, get my own. What's wrong? Mm-hmm. Get my own. Right. <laughs> get that. No, I'm in San Diego, and you couldn't even find a table. Wow. They had couches. Stop it. In the training Stop room. Stop that. I be like. This the hangout. Stop that. So in, da- in Dallas, so people serious, in though. Dallas people, there's a dude by the name of Britt Brown. It was Jim Jim Moore. It was J- Jim. Love Jim, you to death, Britt. Love but, you to death. But hate you at the same yes. time, dude. <laughs> hey, Britt will get you right. I mean, it was pretty much like two leaders hey, between Jim and Britt. Yeah, absolutely. And Jim yeah. was the nice one. Yep. That's very knowledgeable. Good cop, bad cop. Yeah, good cop, bad. Yep. Britt was going to get. I remember what? Britt went off on somebody one what? time. A rookie. A F rookie, F and pick what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brick gonna curse you out, yep. but he, it, you have to earn his respect. You got to earn his respect. He's one of the most knowledgeable, knowledgeable, knowledgeable trainers out there, rehab specialists. Yes. Uh, he'll get you right, but you did not want to be there unless you absolutely had to. Had to the culture in Dallas was don't be by the training room, and I would Ooh. assume that probably came from Parcells. Absolutely. Yeah. So absolutely. now you go to San Diego, and everybody's in there, everybody in rolling there. dice, flipping quarters, and everything else. I'm, I'm gonna give you an example. I remember looking over one week. Uh, Vincent had a hammy issue. Okay. Malcolm did something to his groin. <laughs> Buster had Buster. He was a. It was a whole different thing. Legged dude had pulled a hamstring. Oh my dude! I did training Bruh, with him. I looked over one practice, and there's two rookie free agents. They like this. I was like, oh, no. What the, what the hell are we supposed to do? <laughs> Gates had the toe issue. I was like, oh, my God. What what are we going to do this week, dude? Philip, put it all together, bro. Make it happen. Put it all together. Make it happen. Jeez. We'll get the ass on the same page. Jeez. So I was, I had to, like you said, pull these rookies together. Look it up. Hey, matter of fact, three. Three undrafted free agent rookies, bro. Played that week. Got to play. Phil Rivers, man. Respect. You got to play, bro. Respect. So when they, so when they talk about uh, Tom Brady doing a whole lot with that, like, yeah, I, I seen Philip do a whole lot, but not as much as you think sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Just because out of necessity, it's what he had to do. For sure. He going he gonna to keep us in this thing. Defense, hey, y'all might have to step That's a awesome. little bit. He going to keep us in it. That's awesome. No, 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 it's, 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 there are levels. There are yeah. levels. You know, I was I was spoiled in the league. Obviously, you had Romo and then you had Phillip Rivers. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I made more stops than you, but I went from Romo to Tom Brady. Yep. From Tom Brady, I went to Matt Hasselback. From Matt Hasselback, I went to uh, Eli. Eli yep. You know what I mean? So, yeah. like, I was pretty doggone spoiled yeah, when the, in regards had, to, to yeah, quarterbacks yep. um, and seeing how they led differently. Yes, that's, how they that's the thing. How you, that's, that's that, like you just said. So, because you went, you went from Romo to to, to Philip, and I went from Romo to Tom Brady. Yeah, see, yeah. So I mean, yeah, they different. They different. Yeah, yeah, they different. yeah, they different. But but that's why. And people always talk about Philip. Now Philip does talk noise. Oh yeah, he don't oh, talk. He's right. <laughs> but he gonna back it up. He gonna back it up. Yeah. Love about it. Yeah, that's why I used to love about him. He's a gold out there. Like, yeah. 
He love me and he country. He true country. He from Decatur, <laughs> Alabama. Though. Yeah, that sound country. Uh, never ever saw Philip in a suit, khakis, dockers, cowboy boots. He don't mind. He might give you a jacket. Yes, that's well, that's, that, well, that's, that, that's the fish. He gonna have that. He gonna have that flannel <laughs> shirt on, buttoned up, dude, with a hat, with a baseball yeah, hat on. Yeah. Like, probably a camo baseball hat. Fit it ready. The go. one year. He did wear it. Remember, he wore the bolo tie. Okay. They, they went through it. They went through it. They won. And he, he had it. He had wore it. Uh, and so he wore it again. They won. They went on a little street. So he kept wearing the bolo tie. Yeah. And I remember kind of like, man, what the hell is that? Because yeah. at that time, I was already out of San Diego. Uh, I think it was the year I went to training camp with New Orleans okay. before I shut it down. I said, man, what the hell is that? Hey, Bo. Hey, Bo. You know, Abo. Hey, I'm, I'm a tie right there. Hey, we, we on the street right now. I said, you right, y'all. Y'all on the street, man. Y'all on the street. But I was like, boy, and I talked to Gates uh, because when I was out there, he used to call me No Doubt. Yeah. Because every time Phil asked, I was like, All right, No Doubt, No, no Doubt, No Doubt. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> that was so. love. So coming to the end of your career, how many years you put in? Nine. Nine of them things. That's a long. That's a long dog on career. Everybody chases that ten. Uh, that that nine. Well, I wanted it. Woo. I, I, I would have had my ten. Yeah. Sean Payton released me in New Orleans. And the crazy thing about it is, because I, I I came in late, yeah. I, we, so I'm in that thing fresh. Yeah. So you know when you come in fresh, they expect you shit. You gotta be running there. You gotta be good. So we running them. We doing the parts of running them gases out the practice. Yep. And I'm out there. I'm getting it. <sighs> Why he said this? He was like, yeah. The old man is taking care of business. Yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all youngsters better. No, 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 no. Don't no, call no, me no, that. Don't no, 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 call no, me no, that. No, no, no. <laughs> that's not what we gonna do. That's not what we're going to do. No, I, I, no I'm, I'm, I'm running my pace. Don't, don't, don't worry don't about do that. them. Don't do that. Don't, don't worry about them. They're good. They're good. I'm, I'm, I'm making sure I'm getting back yeah. in my good shape. Now. Don't worry about that. I got man. my calculations yeah, down. I got my, exactly what I'm doing. I got my calculations. I know how I need to run yeah. these. Don't make me have to try to push a little yeah. bit good. Mm-mm, I'm good. And so when he called me into his office after the, uh, I think it was after the second preseason game. Okay. We just played Oakland. Uh, you know, we in film. We in film yeah. the next morning. The guy came and got me. I said, "Oh, the Reaper, God dang. dog on Reaper." He said, "Bring your playbook." God dang, that's 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 the key word that's for it, you. Right you there. Bring the playbook. That's yeah, it. You, you fired. Fire. <laughs> man, so I went there. He was like, "Hey, I'm just gonna be honest with you." He said, "He said it comes down to a numbers guy." He was like, "I wanted to see if you could do." Cause you know, I had Sean Payton my first two years in Dallas. Oh. He's my OC. Is he, is like, he, come, is he coming back to Dallas? Hell no. And okay. deal with the, the Okay, with just the, asking. Just people, the people want to know. Because this is what you got to realize. You know, Sean Payton actually is like Parcel. He he runs the team. Yeah. He's not going to let the team let that, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so he was like, I want to see if you could do, you know what I'm saying, if you could still do what I had you when you was young. But he said, you still can. He said, but the fact of the matter is, he said, what I got to pay you this year is more than the two rookies I got combined. Yeah. And I was like, God dang it. Kill a part of that. They traded Kenny Steels to Miami, and Toon never touched the field. And I'm thinking about, I could have. What yeah, the hell? Yeah, y'all could have kept him. I've been out here helping. But you know, that was what it was. And so I realized going through that season after that, uh, I wasn't going to Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. I wasn't going to Cleveland. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Buffalo hadn't gotten good yet, so I wasn't going to Buffalo. I was like, man. So we was talking. We was talking to. We was talking to Baltimore. Uh, and I was like, yeah, I go to Baltimore. Yeah, yeah, and everything. So we talked to them for a second. They went a different route. I told me, I said, you know what? Everybody time, I'm going to go ahead and shut it down, dude. He was like, well, you sure, man? He said, hey, I can still get out here and we can try to put something. I said, yeah, mm-hmm. no, because uh-uh. yep. I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. Yeah. Dude. yeah. Dang, shut it down. Put, a, put a cap on a nine year career, yeah. dude. It was good, though. It was fun, though. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed my time. Met brothers. Yep. You know what I'm yep. saying? Uh, I was able to take care of my family financially, Absolutely. man, and Absolutely. be able to do different stuff. And it, it taught me for after yeah. football, you know what I'm saying? So I was able to invest and do some stuff before I retired. So that way, yeah. I was already still doing You're something moving. competitive. Still keeping moving. Keep yeah. it moving. You're very moving. And I think a lot of people don't realize, though, like, like once you leave the league, uh, the transition can be tough. Yeah. If Seriously. you allow yourself to have that Yeah, because it can. And I've dealt with friends that I've yep. had to deal yep. with. I mean, I had a little period myself to where yeah. I was like, Shit, okay, what I'm doing now? Cause yeah. You get to the fall and realize that you ain't a part of that. I ain't a part of that. Yep. Yeah. So now it's like, okay, so I just 
dove into the kids mm-hmm. and made the kids my priority as far as now start coaching them. Yeah. Uh, so what, so tell people what you what you're doing now business wise or you know what what's kind of t- occupying your time aside from the business kids. Business wise, uh, yeah. my wife and I we own a Primrose. Nice. Uh, so it's a private preschool. Yep. Uh, she kind of handles that day to day because uh-huh, I figured. that many damn women and kids in the building. <laughs> yep, I figured. I ain't gonna be able to do yeah, it. I ain't gonna be able to do it. I ain't gonna stress me. I give me a headache every day. No. All right. So, so she does that. Uh, then I own FedEx routes. Nice. Uh, so people don't know, understand that the the the, the trucks that come to your house, mm-hmm. those are independent contractors. Uh, unless you see FedEx Express. Now those are the people that actually work for FedEx. Gotcha. But all the other ones, FedEx Ground and everything, Contract. those are independent contractors. So wow. those are my actual. Okay. My drivers, my trucks and everything and stuff like that. Uh, and then we have real estate. Nice. We got real estate that yep. we're, we're getting ready to develop a subdivision up in Oklahoma City. There you go. Like so it's, it's, you know, it's, it's still going. I'm always still looking for the next thing. Always growing, yeah. My wife asked me, she was like, babe, when is enough enough? I'll let you know I when know, I get there. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know, all we know is a chase. And all I know is a chase, but yeah, I'm, yeah. Trying, I'm trying to set the kids up for, like they yeah. say, that generational thing. Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to build that. There you go. So we can keep this going because I told, I told my kids, I said, me and your mom are going to be good. We're not going to be a burden to y'all. Mm-hmm. You don't have to take care of us. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're going to travel. Yeah. When y'all get the hell out of our house, yeah, we me gonna. and mom are going to travel. Don't, yeah. don't even call us. Yeah, we're going. We'll let you know where we're going to be at and <laughs> we'll see you when we get back <laughs> exactly. in Exactly, yeah. Uh, so that's that's the that's the biggest thing we're doing now, man. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. And so you said the kiddos are, we say, sophomore, freshman, eighth, eighth grade. Yeah. So what, they're, they're involved in all the sports now, staying my busy. Oldest, my oldest <clears> is <throat> football and baseball. Okay. My daughter, she's in the middle. She is volleyball. Okay. And then my youngest is basketball and football. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And how's that transition now? Now on the other, other side of it. Now you're the parent. I get to be the parent. Yeah. I get to be the parent. And I love it because last year was my last year coaching. My youngest. Okay. So now I can just go to the games and watch. Yeah. yeah. Still, it still comes out of me, though. I still be doing my yelling and everything and stuff yeah. like that. And I, I do believe that regardless of where I'm at in the stands, they can still hear they my damn voice. At. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it, it's just, a, and a lot of times with my oldest and my youngest, it's I'll make eye contact, mm-hmm. and I'd be like, "Hey, yeah, yeah get yeah. in here, hey, yeah. slow it down, yeah. or whatever, breathe." Yeah. You know, those are just, those, those conversations. Yeah, yeah some conversations we yeah. not really had. So yeah, when absolutely. they see me, I'm yep. like, "Hey, relax, dude. reminders, you're gonna be okay, yep. you're gonna be okay." You know, check back in. Yep, Re- reconfigure this up. I'm like, "Okay, so, so now you part sales." You know, I'm part sales. <laughs> I, 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 ain't, I ain't as crazy now. Yeah, I don't yeah, go as hard. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's, now, now I'm part sale. That's awesome. That's awesome. Man, well, man, thanks for giving us a synopsis, man, of, of the life of hey, life man, of PC, PCA4, man. man. Uh, man, that's y'all, there's a lot of knowledge in there, man. Y'all go back there and tune in to all that. Y'all, there's a yes. lot that you can take away from that, um, different phases of life, uh, different experiences, being a low man on a totem pole to working your way up, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. having the hardships, having to overcome a lot in there, y'all. Go in there to digest that information. Um, continue to tune in and let me tell you something. Um, and I just want to say thanks for PC coming out, man. man. Anytime, bro. All right. All right, fam. Man. So, you yeah. know, we do this all day. Absolutely. We'll catch y'all next time on Let Me Tell You Something.